Hey, Motor Man here. I want to wish everybody a happy Easter, and I want to take a look at this video. This is a woman who's been riding for quite a few years, and her riding really consisted of, like so many, just cruising on down the road, making great big wide turns once in a while, and coming to a nice easy stop. Her ability to lean, turn, and swerve quickly to avoid obstacles or a crash were really pretty much non-existent. So I'm going to show you how short a time it takes for somebody to go from really just using their instincts, which are always wrong when it comes to a motorcycle, and actually using technique. And you'll see the turnaround that we had in a really, really short amount of time. All right, this is the slow cone weave, and we start with these small cones. This is after we've done about 10 minutes of riding in a straight line at, at a low speed and very typical she doesn't want to lean the motorcycle she's trying to steer through the exercise now this will lead into a 30 foot u-turn and she does what most riders do her instinct she looks straight she goes straight she probably made about a oh i don't know 45 50 foot u-turn now here it is 20 minutes later she's going through the big cones she's leaning and dipping the motorcycle we need that dip for every low speed maneuver we ever perform and she cuts that U-turn down to about 24, 25 feet. All right, that was like 100% better. Oh my God. What do you attribute that to? You. <laughs> Did it... uh, holding my arm in and turning in there and looking at you. And did it feel good as you were going through there? Like, wait a minute, what was that? I did something right. Did you, did you get that sensation yeah. at all? Yeah, okay. going through these, I was just trying to turn. Yes. It's not busy yes, and and it's the body that stays straight, and and the hands move. Here it is from a different angle. She's actually starting to dip the motorcycle. And remember that dip is important. It's going to help you avoid obstacles, just like she's avoiding obstacles here. A U-turn gets down to about 24, 25 feet. I should mention this is a private lesson. Betsy knew she needed a lot of help and she felt much better if it was just a one-on-one -on -one lesson and she was correct about that. I, sh I should also mention that she's got some tendon problems in her left hand which makes holding that clutch in for any length of time very difficult for her. So I shortened the amount of gates that she's going through here and I gave her a much more rest time. So I had a cruise around the parking lot after the exercise with the clutch fully extended, no rear brake, and that rests the hand and, of course, cools down the bike as well. This is about our first or second time through, and as you'll see, she'll get much better rather quickly. This is just about 20 minutes later, maybe the fifth or sixth time through this exercise and she's already leaning the motorcycle. She's getting her head around much faster. And remember, if you don't lean the motorcycle, you can't turn. It's got to lean when it turns. She's starting to realize that, and she's using the rear brake a little bit more here. Could use a little bit more pressure on the rear brake as well, but we'll get to that. I don't expect perfection, I just expect improvement. Each time Betsy goes through the exercise, she feels more and more comfortable. She leans the bike further and further. She turns her head and eyes a little bit quicker. And of course, that brings the bike around much faster. And that's what we're looking for here. Each time you go through, with an occasional setback, you want to show improvement. That's all I asked for. And, and with determination, she did it. All right, Motor Man here, and I'm here with Bubba Boswell. He owns Boswell Harley Davidson. Is that that's what you call it? That's right. And, and tell the folks where it's at. Nashville, Tennessee. So, Bubba's Betsy's husband, and they own, as you heard, Boswell Harley Davidson up in Nashville. And I was able to sit down for a few minutes and do an interview. It's not often that you get to talk to a, a dealer owner. And I, I could ask him any question I wanted. Unfortunately, the wind started really kicking up and it ruined most of this interview. I'm going to show you just a couple of minutes of it. If you'd like to see it in it, or another interview in its entirety, he has agreed to doing a Zoom call. And if you'd like some questions answered, let me know. So, how long have you had that dealership? Uh, this dealership's 73 years old. Wow, so yeah. it's, it's not originally yours. Because, it was my father's. And, and he passed it so down passed, to you? Passed, went on and changed ownership in 98. How do you think that the business has changed since, you know, in the past, let's say, 20 years, as far as selling Harley-Davidson? Is it easier, well, harder? I don't, I don't say it's any harder or any easier. It's just the motorcycle business. Um, 
There's no difference between a motorcycle today and it was 50 years ago. They have two wheels, handlebars, and a seat and a motor. And uh, many people that buy them are used to saying, or travel the same roads that their father or grandfather did on a motorcycle. Uh, the, I think the people, they have more options with their time. And it, motorcycles kind of, kind of just kind of gets in some of that time to do it when, before they may have had more time to ride a motorcycle. Today they have less time. Uh, but there's, there's there's thousands of motorcycles sold every year, and and Harley Davidson still carries the biggest market share in the heavyweight body. You were there through the AMF years. Yes. And and what what happened during that time? Well, AMF did, actually did some good things for Harley. It kept them in business. Uh, when the buyout came in 81, AMF was ready to move on and get out of it, and uh, a group of investors bought it. Uh, had some very tough times, but they had a very strong dealer network, a monster dealer network that stood behind them. So both the, the company and the dealer network were broke for the most part. So we all just pulled together and, uh, and it worked and, and worked really hard to save the brand and, 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 and turn this thing around. Unfortunately, it was at this point where the wind really picked up and you, you just couldn't understand either myself or Bubba. So if you'd like to see an interview in its entirety, just let me know. I'd love to do one. He's agreed to a Zoom call. And if there's a particular question you like answered or a couple of questions, just comment below.